And welcome back to Square Off. A long-running ethics investigation of Republican Congressman David Schweikert ended last week with Schweikert, a five-term congressman from Fountain Hills, agreeing to admit to 11 ethics violations, accept a reprimand, and pay a $50,000 fine. The investigative report was an indictment of Schweikert's campaign and office spending during much of his tenure in Congress. Quote, the misconduct was wide-ranging and long-spanning. Representative Schweiker was indifferent to ensuring that the offices he oversaw complied with applicable laws and other standards of conduct. He was indifferent to taking corrective actions. The investigation was treated with similar indifference. Schweikert's office responded, we are pleased the committee has issued their report and we can move forward from this chapter. Congressman Schweiker is up for re-election this fall. Can he save his seat? Joining us this morning for our left-right debate, Chad Campbell, consultant at Strategies 360s and a former Democratic minority leader in the State House, and Barrett Marson, a Republican political consultant at Marson Media. Uh, guys, any disclosures about candidates you might be working for in Schweikert's 6th Congressional District? None, no. Nope. Barrett? No, thank you. Okay, nope. thank you for that. Uh, you've read the report. What leaps out at you, Barrett Marson? Well... Uh, essentially, the way he got his uh, his current seat, he did so in a, well, maybe even a felonious way. He took a $100,000 loan that uh, maybe from a family member. Uh, I know that uh, he said it was a gift that he uh, regularly gets from this family member. I know my Nana Elaine sends me $50 uh, for my birthday. She's going to really have to step it up. Uh, if Schweikert's getting 100 grand from uh, as gifts, but also he uh, made a fictitious loan to his campaign of $100,000, so it made it look like he was doing so much better. And I think you know Ben Quayle may have been robbed of a seat in Congress. Okay, and you use the word felonious there, and to be clear, the report says uh, the statute of limitations has passed. For any crimes right. that may Absolutely. have been considered, so right. just, so, just to make that clear, uh, you know, and no, it's unclear whether uh, they said there will be nothing further. Yeah, and they didn't suggest charges should be filed. Chad Campbell, what jumped out at you? You've seen a lot of scandals in your day. <laughs> yeah, well, a couple things. I mean, first of all, the point that the statute of limitations passed in some of these things, it looked as if Schweikert and his team actually delayed some of these disclosures or kind of stalled on the investigation so that those limitations did pass, and that was interesting to me. And, 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 you know, this wasn't just a one-time thing to Barrett's point and a mistake, and, and he came back and fixed it later on. This was an ongoing pattern. He, he obviously covered this up. Uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of like the political version of laundering money almost. It was like a political breaking bad almost in some ways. Uh, he, he continued this behavior for his own benefit. There's no doubt about that. Uh, and the, the action we saw in the House, I mean, that's a rare action. It does not happen that often. Uh, this is a very severe thing to happen to Schweikert, and I think it's going to play with some of these voters who are kind of sick of the corruption in D.C. Yeah, one of the ironies is uh, David Schweikert likes to be known yeah, as the math guy. I think, yeah, I think he got off a little easy. You know, I mean, he had to pay a fifty thousand dollar fine. Uh, he there was a vote in the House, um, but really now he's washed his hands of it. Uh, I don't think Peralta Bernini, if she wins the primary this week is going to let him forget that and let voters forget yeah. that. But he has gotten off a little easy. Let's pivot to the primary. And, and some have suggested this was a timed release before the primary. The Ethics Committee could have done this at, at any time, uh, perhaps. Uh, so, yeah, four Democratic candidates running on Tuesday. Harold Tipernini, unsuccessful CD8 candidate, uh, now moving into CD6. Anita Malik, who faced Schweikert in 2018 and lost. Uh, Carl Gentles and Stephanie Rimmer. Uh, how, uh, Chad Campbell, I'll go to you. How does Schweikert survive this report and win this election? Uh, I think it's going to be tough. I mean, he has the advantage of this being a traditionally strong Republican district, right? I mean, you're looking at, he, he won this district, I think, by plus 10 last cycle. Uh, but this is also a district that is one of those suburban uh, districts that is trending away now from, from the Republican Party, mainly due to Donald Trump and mainly due to, you know, educated suburban Republican females. So I think this is going to add another element of, of complications to this campaign. And if you look at Tipper Nanny's campaign finance reports, you look at where she's at, if she wins the primary, 
she's going to have about a million dollars in surplus over Schweikert's campaign bank account right now. And that's a significant hurdle, especially for an incumbent congressperson to overcome. That shows you how weak his campaign is right now. And Barrett, I'll go to you with the last question. Uh, Schweikert has spent much of his money, almost a million dollars, defending himself. Can he count on donors to come back or PACs to come back and support him in this race? Well, I was going to say that's the one great thing about this report being done is he can stop paying lawyers. Because right now that is all that he is doing with his money is paying lawyers and expensive lawyers at that. I just want to clarify, I don't think you ever stop paying lawyers, Barrett. I just want to clarify that point yeah. right there. So.